doink. And we're live here on Thursday night, Thursday the 27th of March in the year of our Lord 2014, as it ever was. Um, and it's been, it's been a queer week. Um, and quite a heavy news day, but with leaks, leaked news. This is not, nothing to do with whales and plants and things like that. Um, so tonight you have on VT Talk, myself, David Dawn, and in the slightly raised and embiggerated cat house, the one and only effervescent loveliness and bountiful beautyliciousness that is the one and only Sav. How are you diddling, cock? All right. I'm great. How's yourself, Dave? Well, I'm walking about and breathing, as they say. Good. Although I'm here to tell you that my eyeballs are a bit like um, certain holes in the snow because I've been reading a certain document a lot. Yeah, yes. And it's got lots of big words in. Yes. And some of them are not very nice. No. But we'll find out more about that as we go on. He said, because now that I've picked the oh. right bloody button. <laughs> Honestly, it's murder, isn't it? Um, it is. So, yes, tonight, tonight, it's kind of 50-50 between us and chat because I've got... The moles have been at work. I'll say no more than that until we get to it. And there's rumours flying around, which may be better for us than you might at first think. There's mates to tell you about. There's interesting stuff happened on UKV today that heartens me intensely. And we're going to cover all of that in tonight's episode of VT Talk with Sav and me. And we so, run VT for the titles. Yes, it's VT Talk with Sav and Dave. That sounds like a soul band, doesn't it, really? Sav and Dave. <laughs> That's why I always say Dave and Sav, because then I don't sound like I should be playing the piano. Okay. That's fine. Right, let's 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 get into the, shall we get into the rumour mill first off? Yep. Yeah. Now, need to explain about these two people who I am about to name. One of which is Martin Dockrell. And the other one is Monica Kaczynska. Martin Dockrell currently resides at Ash Action on Smoking and Health, based in London. Not the lot up in Glasgow that we're going to go and see next week, is it not? No. Mm. Um, Martin, as you may recall, has been on radio shows all over the place and is, it has to be said, a big supporter of ASIGs. Um, Everything he says is exactly off the same hymn sheet as we sing until it gets to Medregs and neither Sav nor I believe that he believes in Medregs, do we? No. No. In fact, he's pretty much said so privately and made other pronouncements that makes me believe he's one of the good guys but he's been shackled a bit by the organisation for which he works. Monica Kaczynska works at EFA the European Public Health Association, which numbers God knows how many different health organisations and public health organisations, and it has to be said, some magic water sellers as well, homeopaths, which I believe is still you can still say homeopath without being non-PC, can't you? I think so. Yes. Um, but Monica, Monica Kaczynska heads that little lot up for the moment, but they're both moving. Tell you about Monica. Today she tweeted, and this I thought was telling, that ESIGs should never have been in the TPD and that they should have their own directive. That's what Monica said. And privately, in conversations with myself and a fair few other people, and if Sarah Jakes's uh, Twiglet is in chat, she'll confirm, she also thinks that ESIGs 
should never have been, shouldn't be a medicinal product, should be a consumer product and should be encouraged. But they're both moving. Martin away from Ash and Monica away from Effa. Martin, apparently, according to the rumour mill, and we've had this now from two different sources, Sav? Yeah. Martin is moving to the Department of Health, where apparently he's going to be heading up a unit to do with the regulation of certain consumer devices is what we're hearing, isn't it? Yes, that's exactly what we're hearing. And I'm wondering what kind of consumer devices Martin Dockrell is going to be heading up a unit to regulate in the Department of Health, as in not the MHRA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't know. What we do know is, if there is truth to the rumour and if the surmise is right, then we have a big fan of non-medicinal e-cigs in the Department of Health. This, I think, is a good thing. Would you agree, Sav? I would agree that it's a very good thing. So, that's what Sav says, and she's the boss, so... <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong, it's been known before. Ah. But... It can't be worse than now. It would be difficult for it to be, wouldn't it? Mm. I, I suppose at this point in time it's maybe a good time to say I've had a letter from Jane Ellison. Is it a good time to say that? I think it's a very good time to say that also. I've had a letter from Jane Ellison. There you are. I said it twice. There it is. Look. I've had a letter, have you, dear? I've had a letter from Jane... Well, it was from Jane Ellison to my uh, MAP, my MP, sorry, Bridget Philipson MP. For that is her. I will read it to you. Because there are a few changes from what we've been used to getting in here. It says, Dear Bridget, that's not my name. Dear Bridget, it says, Thank you for your letter of the 13th of February on behalf of two of your constituents about electronic cigarettes. That's me and Keith. It's dated the 17th of March. So she got the letter on the 13th of February and she's written back on the 17th of March. They work so quick in London, don't they? Do you not think? I mean, good God. I'm <laughs> slow, but I'm not that bloody slow. <laughs> to my everlasting shame. And my wife's everlasting disappointment. <clears throat> right, where were we? Electronic cigarettes have been the subject of much debate in recent years, both domestically and at the EU level, particularly since the European Commission published its proposal for a revised tobacco products directive in December 2012. <laughs> no tish, Turlock. <laughs> yes. The UK government's position on the regulation of electronic cigarettes is based on a robust but pragmatic harm reduction approach in as far as they have the potential to drive substitution away from the harms of smoking and to be of benefit to some smokers who are trying to quit. That's language we've not heard before, isn't it? Yeah. Coming from government. We wish to see them widely available, but with stronger consumer safeguards on quality and safety. We also want to retain the ability to monitor their wider impact and specifically to ensure that they are not being marketed to young people or used as a tool for recruiting new smokers. We have heard that before. The UK government believes that the text that secured political agreement in Brussels on the 18th of December 2013 goes a long way to achieving these aims. I would say it goes further, way much further than it needs to, but never mind. Article 8, this is how up to date she is, right? This is how up to date. Article 18 of the revised directive will subject electronic cigarettes to consumer products legislation. Jen, if you're watching, it's Article 20 now, pet. It got changed before you wrote this letter, honestly. Um, yes, Article 20 is what she means of the revised directive will subject electronic cigarettes to consumer products legislation unless they fall under the definition of a medicinal product, says here. It further establishes new rules for the safety, quality, ingredients and presentation of consumer electronic cigarettes as well as refill mechanisms. There will also be closer monitoring of market developments. The revised directive was recently supported by the European Parliament's Environment, Public Health and Food Safety Committee, ENVI in other words, and was formally approved by the European Parliament at its plenary session on the 26th of February. When it was Article 20, Jane, not Article 18, just thought I'd tell you. EU member states are expected to adopt the revised directive later this month. I thought they already had. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. 
Member states will have two years to implement the revised TPD domestically and transpose it into domestic laws. I hope this reply is helpful, it says. And then, pen, which is written in pen. And please be assured that the government has aimed to strike the right balance with these measures. That what is said. Kind regards, it says here, Jane, with a capital J. Jane Ellison. That's, that's what she's written in reply. So I'm going to go and see my MP again with Keith and I'm going to sit down and say yeah what do you make of that because my MP is a scientist she reads the science she doesn't go in for all this claptrap of the kind that uh, a certain stand on glands uh, trumpets out every five minutes she's not like that she doesn't believe that kind of rubbish she's a, she's a scientist and she, and she actually does understand so I'm going to go and see her and run stuff by her which will be canny but Take that together with Martin Dockrell moving to the Department of Health because you will have noticed in all of that one word kept on not appearing. Did you spot the word that didn't appear, Sav? There was a few, but there was one in particular. Efficacy. Mm -hmm. Efficacy did not appear in anything she wrote. Which means to me that they may well have given up on this trying to make them medicines by function just as a matter of course because they can't because they'll know they'll lose that one so that's interesting i presume chat might have had a couple of comments about that have they they have and also the martin dockerel thing uh andrew abrigus said <coughs> god martin but it can't be bad dave robert Lever said they're gonna skin him alive there what the doh entropy... yeah mm. uh, well you never know entropy 72 says well seeing as you've just said he toast the party line it's not necessarily a good thing uh, Whip it up 69 says, makes no odds, Dave. The EU have already banned them by default anyway. And very boring, it says, does this mean that the dodgy Australian anti smoker Black won't be involved in the Department of Health thing anymore? Do you know? Are you thinking that he might be taken over from Black? Oh, wouldn't that be good? I mean, anything would be better. But tree stump would be better than Black. It would. I mean, I've, no, I've, I've seen him sitting there. I think the thing about it is, uh, Jane, uh, we've, we've, we've managed to get it through Europe now, and the best thing we can do, I think totally, is to put them in plain packaging and uh, only allow them to be sold by kangaroos on uh, Kings Cross Station between the hours of 12 at midnight and 12.05 in the morning. Not the lunchtime 12.05, the midnight 12.05. It should be fine for all the junkies. That's more or less where he's at, isn't it? Apologies to any Australians. <laughs> right, I shall continue <laughs> after <Go on>. that. <laughs> go on, Disco go. Des says, regarding your letter, he takes it you're only known as Bridget at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, I told you not to tell anybody that. <laughs> Leanna Lawless has said, I got a copy um, of a Jeremy Hunt letter, her MP only communicates on the HOC paper and she got that today. Moonlit says I got a rather delayed letter from my MP with an attachment from my MEP too. So there seems to be a lot of MPs and MEP letters that have gone out recently. Mm. Uh, Max Drum says it's double talk telling you that they have no idea and will not talk to you. Entropy said that's language the cabinet nudge unit was pushing a long time ago. They have finally been listened to He's as I don't believe for one second they've listened to us. He spotted it. Mm -hmm. He spotted it because that's exactly the language the nudge unit was using. Yeah, Sorry, it is. I'll, I'll, I'll fade out that way. <laughs> <laughs> Steffi said refill mechanisms, so she didn't talk about the October version then. Yoda has said nothing in that letter says we'd like to strike the right balance between the directive and the users. And very boring has said they have noticed the industry could be worth more than they thought, so they don't want to give potential profits to the MHRA. They want to keep it for themselves. That that last bit's probably truer than you think, mm -hmm. in all honesty, uh, because the MHRA, of course, would cream, well, millions, billions potentially. Um, and they've realised that, hang on a minute, we don't need the MHRA to get... Actually, I'm, I'm also hearing that the MHRA is under attack in various different quarters in the Houses of Parliament as being, um, what's the word? Not fit for purpose. That's the polite yeah. version of a festering pile of dingo kidneys. 
It is, yes. Um, a few people are asking, can you clarify what the nudge unit is? Um, but before that, Mr. Desi Vapor says, it just feels like a rather generic, I didn't really take your letter's point, but here is the stuff that you have proposed that you already know about, have a nice day, kiss and cuddles, Jane, type letter. It kind of is, but it's 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 a, a stage further along the line from the, the kiss and cuddle letters that we were getting before. I still don't think she knows what's happening, in truth. No. But I shall be requesting a meeting with her, and that I'll make two different MPs that will be requesting meetings with her on my behalf, our behalf, everybody's behalf. Um, so things are moving very, very slowly, but in the right direction there, because um, there's no way am I giving in to this, and neither should we, hence EFVI. Um, you know, EFVI gives us the opportunity to go and present at the European Parliament and and they are aware it's happening. I've heard yeah. that as well. They are aware it's happening and they're a little bit worried about it. And if they're worried about it, because that's what that last little handwritten bit says to me, and please be assured that the government has aimed to strike the right balance with these measures. In other words, they know we're going to try and haul them over the coals with EFVI and that worries them. It does worry them because they might have to go back to the drawing board, which I bloody well hope they do. Right, what was it I needed to explain? The, the nudge unit. The nudge unit. It's the uh, behavioural insights unit that advises HM government, that advises the cabinet and the HM government. And what, what this is basically, it's, um, it's a unit that's dedicated to social engineering but they like to think benign social engineering. So rather than, I mean, they did it with tax, rather than uh, draconian laws and, and, and uh, fining you, you know, £1,500 for being half an hour late with your tax return, they would say, well, here's a reminder. And they were, they were putting out um, letters to people, and I got one. To say that, did you know that in your postcode, 80% of people submitting their tax returns submit them up to a month early? And the idea is to nudge you gently into doing the same thing. It's, it's, uh, it's why they're called the Behavioural Insights Unit. And these, these are psychologists, basically, who's, who are tasked with the job of moving you into the right little path of action. And going back, it's two years now, isn't it, since the uh, Behavioural Insight Unit came up with that, this idea that e-cigs were probably a better bet than smoking tobacco cigarettes, mm -hmm. and so people should be encouraged to switch to them. And of course, government at the time, the Behavioural Insight Unit, the Nudge Unit, was relatively new, didn't have a fat lot of power because it hadn't shown its, its metal. MHR, of course, had, do excuse me, a little bit windy pops there. MHRA had already shown its swinging scythe of powers. So when the MHRA said, yeah, but they need to be medicines, they kind of got listened to a bit more than the nudge unit, really. Now, however, as has been pointed out, exactly the same kind of language that was used by the nudge unit, by the behavioural insight unit, is being used by... Jane Ellison. And I find that interesting. The, 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 the change in the political stance that we're seeing going on now is quite, it's, it's not profound, it's not massive, but it's a bit of a sea change in many ways from, from what we've been used to seeing. And the whole notion of Martin Dockrell coming away from Ash and going to the Department of Health with that kind of rhetoric being pumped out by the Department of Health, or the Minister for Health, the Junior Minister for Health, um, I find that kind of heartening because it does, I think, suggest that when it comes to implementation within the UK, it may well be that the filling mechanism on this, for instance, is sufficiently spill-proof, sufficiently leak-proof to pass muster, especially given that Martin understands the toxicity of nicotine. Um, and this is not the... Uh, to kowtow, if you like, it's not to bow down to regulation and stuff like that, and it's, it's not me giving up the ghost. This is me thinking, well, we've got to be talking to these people anyway, just in case Plan B goes pear-shaped. 
-hmm. you know, we've got to try and make the best of everything that's going on. Have we got more stuff coming in? Because I know I want to I want to feature chat a lot tonight. No, we don't have a lot of stuff coming in. But regarding Martin, um, getting back to what I said earlier, he, it's someone who's been involved in this from pretty much the very beginning. He knows a lot. He's got family members that use E6. He's got to be a good person to have there. He understands the argument. He understands our side of the argument because he's listened to it many, many, many times. He's got to be a good person to have there. Well, I mean, my, my understanding is, as well, that he... <laughs> and this is just rumour. I have no uh, corroboration for it, but I was told that he'd been told he wasn't welcome in Glasgow on the 3rd of April. Mm. If that's the case, that's a good thing. Now, it may yeah. not be the case, but that's something I'd heard. Um, and, you know, who knows? Who knows? We'll find out when we go there, because we'll see everybody that's going in and out. Yeah, because that kind of puts them in the same camp as us, doesn't it? That we're not welcome there either. <laughs> there is that. There is that. But, I mean, the fact, the fact of the matter is, every time I've been anywhere where Ma uh, Martin Dockrell has spoke or he's been around... He's always been a great supporter of ASICs. The only difference between his stance and mine has been the medicinal thing. And now that that's not there, um, his stance is, is broadly similar to where ours is. And he doesn't believe 20 milligrams is enough either. Mm -hmm. um, it could be why he's left Ash and gone to the Department of Health. Could be. Um, the Monica Kaczynska move, did I say where she was going? No, I don't think no, you did. No, I didn't, did I? No. I tell you what, I'm going to put you on a cliffhanger. We'll take the adverts and I will tell you who Monica Kaczynska's new employers will be after the adverts. Back in two minutes. And we're back in the room here on VT Talk with Sav and no. Dave. Dave and Sav. That's a Sav. This is a Dave. This is a Dave. That's a Sav. There you Are go. Are you sure? It. I think so. Right. i tell you what I do know for sure. Mm. That's an E-Sig. <laughs> and that's a vapour tank. Is that a vapour tank, is it? Yeah, that's a vapour tank. This is an oh. E-Sig. I was getting confused. I thought this was an E-Sig. <laughs> oh, no, shut This up. is a don't go there. It was bad <laughs> enough on Monday. I was explaining it to everybody up the street. So was Keith. Right, yes. Monica Kaczynska is moving to work for the World Health Organization. The WHO. I will pause for dramatic effect. It's only because I find it very difficult to speak after I've said those three initials. 
And that's interesting because how can I put this? I don't I don't want to give the game away as to where I got this leaked document. Let's just say a pigeon fluttered by and dropped it on the back lawn. Um, it came in an unmarked envelope with no return address, no stamp, I had to pay the postage, and everything. And we will be making it available for your perusal. Have you got the link handy, sir? I have got the link handy, yes. We'll drop it into chat as we go along, and I will tweet the link to where the whole of this document is stored. It is not available anywhere else online that I am aware of because I've been searching on key phrases on it. But it is the draft summary, he said, pressing the right button, it's the draft summary record of the second meeting of the fifth bureau of the Conference of the Parties to the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. That's what it says up at the top there. Now, for people who don't know what all the relationships of all this thing, the World Health Organization and the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control and what is known as COP6, which is the conference of the parties, which happens in October. I need to perhaps give you a little bit of background. The FCTC, the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, is basically Stanton Glance on steroids. It's, they want to see the Framework Convention is geared towards seeing an end game for tobacco usage worldwide. They want to stamp out smoking. That's what it's set up to do. It is funded almost totally by Big Pharma. They support everything FCTC does, overtly, overtly. Although privately, I don't think they do, because every so often you see that the World Health Organization is scrabbling about for funds and Pharma just doesn't just automatically bail them out. The World Health Organization is fed into by organizations like ASH, like EFA, the European Public Health Alliance, of which Monica Kaczynska was the boss until she moves on. It's fed into as well by government agencies, so the Department of Health will send representatives there, but they tend to be civil servants that go on these things. And although you would think, reading through and, and reading through some of what I'm going to be sharing with you tonight, that they were a regulatory body or a governmental body, they are neither. States, countries, what they call parties, sign up to the FCTC and in doing so they promise to implement its various different protocols they're called. It's like a directive in the EU. So basically the FCTC is a little bit like, a, it's like a little EU only, it's worldwide and it's concerned only with tobacco control. That is purely and simply what it's about. It's supposed to be 100% transparent. You will find out later that it's not. It's supposed to be um, accountable to governments worldwide. You will find out later that it's not. And it is supposed to take into account financial, fiscal, personal and safety issues. And you will find out later that it doesn't. That's the World Health Organization. One of the reasons I'm a little bit pleased that Monica Kaczynska is rumoured to be going there is because of, uh, and I need to find COP11 here, phrases like, come on mouse, there you are, this one, which I will put on screen even now, which is in this document. The Bureau felt that it was important to include scientific evidence as to whether ends electronic nicotine delivery systems contained nicotine from tobacco leaves and not synthetic nicotine as claimed by the tobacco industry, in which case they would be considered as tobacco products as per the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. The, Bu the Bureau also referred to Articles 5, 8, 13 and 16 of the FCTC that contained provisions to allow the Conference of Parties, COP, to make recommendations on regulation of smokeless tobacco products and ends. The bit I really want you to see is that bit that they are claiming 
that the tobacco industry says that it's synthetic nicotine that's in e-cigs. To my knowledge, that's never been claimed. To your knowledge, Saf? Not that I know of, no. Nobody has ever claimed that it's synthetic nicotine, but the really nasty bit about that is that it's important to include scientific evidence as to whether e-cigs effectively contain nicotine from tobacco leaves, in which case they would be considered as tobacco products as per the WHO FCTC. And you might think, well, America's already said the tobacco products. America's not signed up to the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. They don't have to implement anything the FCTC comes up with. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So for America, it's probably quite safe to say it's a tobacco product. For the rest of the world, because every other country bar America just about is signed up to this, if the World Health Organization decides, issues a guideline, that these things should be to be treated as tobacco products, then we have no seat at the table at all. And this is what they're trying to do. If you think the EU TPD was tantamount to a ban, that that we've just read out is an explicit ban. Because there is no advertising, because there is no seat at the table, under section 5.3 of their rules and regulations, MPs can't talk to people from ESIG companies anymore. This is ridiculous. I've got some more bits and bobs that I've taken out. Let's go to uh, this one that I want to share. The head of the Secretariat felt that more importance should be given to the threat posed by electronic cigarettes and other smokeless products which in his view could result in a new wave of the tobacco epidemic. This item should, in his view, be given a special attention at COP6. Right, now, I want to translate that for you as well. I don't see how, that, how it's possible to have a new wave of a tobacco epidemic if such a thing exists and I don't believe it does. Um, but this special attention at COP6 means suspending their standing orders and, and basically putting a ban in place at COP6 in October. In other words, not following their usual procedures, which would take at least another two years for them to come out with such um, a policy, for want of a better word. And I can see your eyes flitting about, Saf. Are people inflamed? Yes, especially by that last bit, um, but I'll read through what I've got here. Hang on, I'll just go back to the top. Um, <clears throat> Mona has said, so why would Big Pharma want to eradicate smoke in it? Because then they couldn't flog their NRT. Well, I, as I said, I don't believe that Big Pharma's actually as um, active in funding this kind of thing as you might expect them to be, because I've, been, mm. I've looked back through the COP5 stuff and it, it, that level of support isn't there. Sorry, back to you. Uh, Leanna Lawless has said, so if you stamp out tobacco, where do they get the nick for NRT? I suppose you wouldn't need NRT if there wasn't any tobacco, because there wouldn't be any smoking. It, well, yes, there is that. Yeah. Entropy has said, so you've got Cancer Research UK going to ASH, ASH going to the WHO, the WHO going back to Cancer Research UK, so public health has officially eaten itself. Um, I, I was having a conversation yesterday um, with a friend of mine and what you have just described is what is known as a circle jerk or a fluster cook if you like but you are exactly right cancer research pulls the strings on ash um, both report back to the, the, the World Health Organization and the World Health Organization goes back and tells them it's just a big circle I'd, yeah, sod it. back to yourself yeah, Robert Gleaver said you mean the WHO have been lying to us Oh yes, without a shadow of a doubt they've been more than lying. Dissembling is the uh, official term. Dissembling means lying through their back teeth and smiling while they do it, shafting you up the anal passage without the use of any Vaseline. Sounds about right, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, very boring, it says, whenever any organisation claims transparency and accountability, it's always bull oxen. Yes, exactly right. It, it is, in fact. Um, I mean, well... Uh, Here's a case in point. We never ever made any claim anywhere that would be totally transparent, but if anybody wants to come and have a look at the books, they can. And I'll tell you now for a certain fact, nobody makes any money out of this. 
Oh, I wish. Oh, would be lovely, I wouldn't it? I said that out loud, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're on double time tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twice yeah. nouts, nout. <laughs> Twice nothing. I um, love double time. It's brilliant, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, exactly right. I mean, and I'm coming on to the transparency. Wait until you say the transparency thing. It's cop nine. Just wait and see. Yeah. Uh, so Mona has said, so e-cigs with synthetic nick are not tobacco products and therefore okay. Yes. Well, no. No, no, no. E-cigs with synth synthetic nick are less easy to categorise as a tobacco product and therefore less easy to demonise. The thing is, if you were to drop a piece of sodium metal into a jar containing chlorine gas, there would be a chemical reaction. And if you got the quantities right, you would end up with a little pile of salt at the bottom, sodium chloride, for that is what salt is. That would be synthetic sodium chloride, which chemically is identical to naturally occurring sodium chloride, the stuff that you would get out of the, the sea. When you're taking all the shells and bits of dead crab and crap out, you'd be left with natural sodium chloride. Synthetic nicotine is identical to naturally occurring nicotine. They are using semantics to get what they want. That's exactly yep. what it is. It's semantics in order to get what they want, which is no e-cigs anywhere on the planet. Just thought I'd point that out. Back to you, Sav. Entropy72 said, so if I feed a cow mulch tobacco leaves, uh, is its beef covered by the FCTC? Um, they really don't know what they're biting off here, do they? No. They're probably, again, if you, if you could extract enough nicotine from aubergines or potatoes or tomatoes or any other member of the Solanacea family that is not tobacco, then, again, they would have difficulty in pinning this whole tobacco thing down to the nicotine that's produced. Unfortunately, although it's possible, it is financially unviable. It costs bazillions to do that kind of thing. So, at the moment, a litre of pure nicotine would cost in the region of, let, let's say, $100, just for the sake of a figure. And if you were to get it out of tomatoes or potatoes or any of the Solanacea family, you would be looking at about two and a half thousand dollars a litre. It just really doesn't make any sense to try and do that. Not yeah. at all. Yeah, a couple of people in chat have said that as well. Vapor Keeper says it makes subtle difference where the nick comes from. Nicotine is nicotine is nicotine. It's indistinguishable from synthetic nick. And Entropy said nicotine is a molecule. It's in indistinguishable from that in a potato or an aubergine. Exactly um, right, yes. Lorian has said, no one can talk to us at all, that would mean no communications, nothing. Whip it up 69 says, that's killing free speech. Vapor Keeper says, it's a threat to the status quo, maybe. Uh, Moonlit has said, wait, what, October, that sounds extremely problematic for us. <laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not the simplest thing, but um, it's April the 3rd next week, isn't it? Yes. April the 3rd, tune in because Paddy Costal will be on the show, as will, um, why has my head gone wrong? Uh -huh. uh, old Chemist and um, another, uh, another one of the, uh, the Polish Vapors Organisation uh, people. I'm sorry, names have gone right out of my head. And we'll be talking about um, the Global Nicotine Conference that's taking place in Warsaw uh, for a very, very good reason, in June. That's why that's there. And that's why I'm also going to Switzerland in May to talk at a harm reduction conference at which there'll be a lot of World Health Organization people there as well. Um, yeah, we're starting to fight this. Trust me on that. We, we need to be fighting this. But tune in next week for more on that. Sorry, Sav, back to you. Um, one second, I've just closed my page down by accident. Um, Midge Dog has said, so when we get the chance to communicate with any viable body, especially local, we should grab it. Definitely grab it now. Yes. Um, Gillis has said, this will force people into playing around with growing tobacco and extracting nicotine or going black market. It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And NP72 says, question, how do we get out of the FCTC? <laughs> yeah, well, yes. How do we get out of the FCTC? That's what you've got to lobby government for, I'm afraid. Um, but unfortunately, as we've seen, uh, there are many politicians of all kinds of different flavours that have been so inculcated 
by the, the rhetoric that's been spouted by the anti-smoking activists of the likes of Glantz um, and various others, that they've, they've, they've taken the propaganda in and they believe everything they're being told. As a case in point, and I mean, right, let's, let's get this absolutely right. The World Health Organization does some very good work. The World Health Organization was instrumental in bringing down the likes of the, the AIDS um, problem, the HIV problem. It got completely snowed with the H1N1 virus, the avian flu. That was, they got snowed by the pharma companies and they know they did. Um, the whole tummy flu debacle, I mean, it just wasn't necessarily, they got completely snowed by the pharma companies, but they do do a lot of good work. They are responsible for the downturn in malaria and various other things. But they are so easily swayed and convinced by stupid rhetoric of the likes of this. Look, recognising the threat posed by smokeless tobacco products and nic nicotine delivery systems ends, including electronic cigarettes. Parties in the region were expecting that due consideration would be given by COP6 to discussing and providing guidance on regulatory measures. Proliferation in the use of water pipes was another concern raised by the parties in the region that would also require regulatory measures. In other words, they've been told, and what tends to happen with these, um, you probably work out that the mole that we've got is part of all of this. Anyway, I'm not going to give too many indications, but they tend to bring this stuff up when the delegates to these meetings, in these regional meetings, are tired and possibly emotional. Follow me thought pattern here. And they'll feed them this information when they're at their most receptive. And you can see that there is a threat posed by smokeless tobacco products and e-cigs. What threat? It's not defined. The threat is not defined, other than it could cause a second wave of the tobacco epidemic. How? This is all the kind of crap that Glantz comes out with. And, more to the point, Glantz is an American. America is not signed up to the FCTC, and yet he was commissioned to come up with a report that the World Health Organization is using and is promulgating to all of its members and members of all of its committees and plenaries and everything else. And that needs to be shot down in flames and it's in the process of being done, I hope, by academics worldwide. Um, we're up against a propaganda machine here that is hell-bent on destroying e-cigs for what seems to me to be puritanical and prohibitionist tendencies and that's to me, that's all wrong. Sav? Yeah, um, Jeff Caldicott has said, so Dave, are you saying that if a meeting in October bans e-cigs, it, it would be immediate law worldwide except the US? Um, no, I'm not. It's guidance. And I would hope that what's happened in Europe will give pause to what's going on. Now, if you remember right at the top of the show, we said Martin Dockrell, very pro ACIGS, Department of Health. Department of Health has to send representatives to the World Health Organization to discuss all of this kind of thing. And the UK, generally speaking, is very well viewed in these in these meetings. So Martin Dockrell, Department of Health, there's a little bit of a, a, a light, a little chink in the armor, if you like. Um, Monica Kaczynska, who professes to be very supportive of ACIGS and, and has said so, I mean, she, it was Monica Kaczynska that blew the lid on the fact that the pharma companies had offered millions or a lot of money for effort to lobby against um, consumer e-cigs in the TPD. She blew the lid off that. She um, has said that the TPD should not have had e-cigs in, it should have its own directive and it should be science-based. I'm going to take her at her word, but I'm going to be watching what she's doing. But again, we're talking about the post that she's going into may well have some bearing on what happens and this is a reason for um, I'm not going to say befriending but opening dialogues engaging with right at the beginning of all of this and this is no secret Clive Bates said to me because I was very nervous about getting involved in advocacy and he said look you are going to have to work 
with people who have views that you really don't like and don't agree with, but who do agree with the important part of what you're doing. And that is, broadly, saving ASICs. Okay? So over the course of the last 18 months or so, yes, I've been working alongside folks whose ultimate aim is to see cigarette smoking stamped out. It's not mine, and I don't buy into that. But they also see that saving e-cigs and making e-cigs vapor tanks widely available is a good thing and that's the bit i'm latching on to when all of that's done then you know you fight them about the other stuff but we have to form alliances wherever we can and we're looking i'm looking for alliances not in, in actual fact i got a skype message earlier on um, about someone else who's been having a conversation on twitter who could be a good ally i've not had a chance to check into that yet but I will, because yes, we need to form alliances with people who have the clout to be able to put our side of the story. I mean, make no mistake about it, Jean-Francois Etter, um, Antoine Flau, uh, Robert West, a whole host of people who have stood up and said, look, e-cigs are a good thing, trust us, we're doctors, because they are. They would like to see the end of cigarette smoking, but they want to see e-cigs prol proliferate, and that's 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 where we're at and we've got to try and, and form those alliances wherever we can um, and I need to take some adverts we'll take chat when we come back from the adverts can I do chat now yes um, yes 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 go go and then go there's a couple of questions right um, entropy has said so is it a case of allowing the likes of glance enough rope to hang himself there's rumblings from his own camp already yes Vapor Keeper said getting out of the FCTC is political suicide. No politician anywhere is going to do that. Um, um, that's true. He also said, Vapor Keeper said, which silly person appointed Glance to advise the WHO? Secondary, who the feck are the peer reviewers at the JMA? <laughs> Lorian has said. <laughs> <laughs> they're, um, they're very, very old men that are hard of hearing, hard of thinking, and hard of seeing, <laughs> and hard up for the reviewers' fees. Oh, it's easy, so yes. Lorraine has said there are minimums that the FCTC expect countries to adhere to. It then expects countries to restrict further than its minimums. Yoder has said, surely we can't do all this without, without they can't do it without subsidising or substantiating their claims. And Neil Roth has said, we challenged the EU. That didn't help, did it? I think that helped enormously when we challenged the EU. Um, I would agree with yourself. Um, I've got to say, and I've, I'm, I, you know, I've got no problem saying this. Had we not challenged the EU as a body, as a, as a, as a community, these things would be off the market now. Mm. Um, or if not now, they would be off the market in, in, in a fairly short order. Um, you know, within two years, they'd have been gone, they'd have been wiped off. Um, when uh, Davies, when Chris Davies said we'd won this massive victory, he wasn't altogether wrong. It was the, the scale of the victory that we'd won that he got wrong. It's a little victory. All it meant was we didn't get killed, we just got captured. But we still lost. Mm -hmm. We just didn't get killed. Yeah. But it's, we've got another chance to come back fighting. That's, that's what the AFVI is all about. Yeah. We, we've kind of set the, uh, the tone. We've kind of done the groundwork, if you like, and we now have support from, I believe, 130 or more MEPs in Europe. It would appear that we're gaining support from public health professionals on a daily basis. Look, let me take the adverts and when I come back, I'll show you some of the support that we're gaining from public health professionals because this thrilled me when I saw this and I kind of want to make the last session of this a bit more positive because all this talk about the World Health Organization, Organization is a little bit negative, but there's a lot of positive stuff coming out as well. And I do class Dockrow's move and Kaczynska's move as being positive, guardedly, but positive. We're yeah. back in a couple of minutes and I'll, I'll try and fill you in.
and we're back in the room we're back in the room I'm going to share this with you straight away um, we've all heard of Louise Ross look at this that got posted on UKV today from stop smoking service manager that's a very inventive title hi I am a service manager with the NHS stop smoking service in Hampshire we are trying to find out more about vaping and the products used to improve the support that we can offer to smokers who want to quit tobacco with an e-cig slash vapor I've read all the academic reports and papers on e-cigs, but we don't even understand the language used. How do the kits vary? What the differences are between the products for the user and so on? Most of us used to smoke and know about tobacco, but we have not used e-cigs. That's telling. If you are in Hampshire and could come in for a chat, the office is in Aldershot, Fairham or Ashurst. Ash... Ashurts? Ash... I want to say Ashurts, but never mind, I don't know. <laughs> We promise no lectures, group hugs, or any of the strange things you may think the NHS gets up to. Aww. Or perhaps we can visit you in a coffee shop where e-cigs are allowed to be used as they are not permitted on NHS sites at present. We've heard about the great work done in Leicester with UK Vapors. Can we do this in Hampshire too? And there's a phone number there, 0845 602 4663, or email quit for life at nhs.net and ask for julia i look forward to hearing from you i'm going to leave that there i hope people can see the numbers if you're in hampshire or its surrounding environs jot the numbers down get in touch now that that's just that's just the first of them and this has come i think and i'm not alone in thinking this from louise ross and the work that she's well it says it's come from louise ross and the work that she's doing in leicester and like i said there's more and more public health professionals are discovering that vapor tanks, because this is a vapor tank, that's an e-cig, this is a vapor tank, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they're discovering the worth of these things and why they are so damn good. So that is brilliant and building on that. Does, does, that, does that help, Sav? I mean, that is just amazing, that reading stuff like that, it, you think, finally, finally. People are listening, and I mean, Max Drum has just said, I think the more the rollout like Leicestershire has done, sorry, I'll start that again. <laughs> the more that the, the rollout like Leicestershire gets done, there will be no argument as to the threat from e cigs. It's all about the potential money and losses gains from all sides apart from the vaping community. And the more we see these being picked up, and it's just fabulous. I mean, Rachel Coffey has just said, that's lovely, Dave. It's asking sincere, intelligent questions with an aim to learning. It, it's exactly right. That is so exactly right. It, it's because Louise was strong enough and brave enough to take that first step. Other um, public health professionals have seen that it can be done and they want to do it because they get it. And they're not being snored by the likes of Stanton Glance and Martin McKee and Chapman and yeah, the rest I, of the idiots. Sorry, Sav. I mean, Mage Dogs just said, I've phoned and emailed Julia from that thread as I live so close. Great to see they're interested. Absolutely. And the fact, I mean, one, one of the thrilling things is they've said, why don't we meet in a vaping coffee shop somewhere? Mm -hmm. You know, this is, I think it's brilliant. I think that's amazing stuff. And of course, segueing, swiftly on of course there's all kinds of, of meets going on that you can invite these people to yeah that would be brilliant getting them to come along and meet and talk to as many people <coughs> as possible i can't think of anything better where are you going to get the combined experience of lord knows how many folks that have been using these things for various different times from days to weeks to months to years now there is a meet in york believe it or not, on Sunday coming, if you are in, well, it doesn't matter where you are in the country, um, it's on in York, it's the York Vape Meet on, on, well, Sunday. <laughs> um, it starts at two, there's reggae music from six o'clock, man, there's food available from eight o'clock, York Brewery beers are down to £2.30 a pint for the day, excluding Ghost Ale, which I believe is an empty glass. Um, hosted at the three-legged mayor pub on Petergate with the full support and encouragement from the pub landlady who apparently is Al Murray uh, no that's the landlord isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but there you go that's, there's, there's a picture of the door sign no smoking, vaping welcome 
going to be a fantastic day out for vapors in North Yorkshire. Um, so there it is, York Vape Meet, Sunday 30th of March. Matt Gluggles is involved in it. Go, go if you can get, get if you can yeah. go. Do it, do it. And you know of some more that are coming up on the weekend of, uh, of the 5th, don't you? There is. Um, I know that there's a vape meet in Bristol on the 6th. Bristol. Um, I, like, yeah. I like Bristles. I don't know all the, the details, but um, I think there's someone in chat. I forgot who gave me it now, but someone in chat, if you shout up who you are, they know who it is. Um, there's, there's something going on in Glasgow that weekend. I'm pretty sure there's a meet going on. I'm sure there's another one, but I can't remember where it is. Didn't you see a Manchester? Manchester, yes. I'm pretty sure there's something in Manchester. And there is one happening in South Shields. <gasps> That's Run it. VT. in South Shields. Now, strangely enough, I had lunch today there. Did you? I did. And the oh, boss lady was there. Ooh, cool. And she sat there and she, she, this is exactly what she did and what she said. She said, oh yes, April the 5th, the vapors are coming. <laughs> Excellent. I cannot wait. That was what she said. She's really looking forward to the vapors coming. Right, I've got some more info on vape meets. I missed one that was at the end of April. Um, hang on, see if I can find it. There's one in Scunthorpe on April 20th at the Abacus Pub. That came from uh, Entropy. Meet on Saturday the 19th of April at the Salutation on Maid Marion Way in Nottingham. There is Fury Fest in Worcester on the 5th. Uh, so talk to the Furious Fury and chat about that. That should be great. I would go to that if I wasn't going to leave me. Uh, the Bristol Vape Meet, I've now got its uh, Sunday the 6th of April at the famous Royal Navy Volunteer. It's a lovely pub with some great beers on tap uh, and it's from 2pm. There you go. Um, and if I've forgot anything else, then I've forgot. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you're putting a meat on, do what Kat did. Put a little 30 second video together with the dates and the places and the postcodes and the, you, you know, Put something together, send it in, we'll play them. Because I think vape meets are vital. I really mm -hmm. do think vape meets are vital. And that weekend, I think it's brilliant that there's so much going on scattered all over the place. So if you can't get one, the likelihood is you can get to another. I think it's phenomenal. I really mm -hmm. do. I really do think it's phenomenal. And and if you go into any of these, shoot some video. Yeah. Even if it's on an iPhone, doesn't matter what it is, other other smartphones are available. Shoot some video. And, and we'll we'll cobble it all together and, and you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be super professional when we cobble it all together, but folks will be able to see what's going on and invite people from your local stop smoking services to come along. Why not? It's, yeah. it, at the very worst, they'll buy you a pint. Maybe. Exactly. Talking about which, can I get a lift to the knees, mate? <laughs> <laughs> as you have to do the only thing we've got left to cover we've done the york mate we've done the knees mate we've done all the other mates there's one other mate happening on april the third ash scotland have their we're going to get together and slam e -cigs off conference um starts at stupid o'clock in the morning Sav and I are going to travel up to Glasgow the night before and stay in an hotel, an establishment for sleeping in, overnight. We may or may not be sober. But in the morning, we're going to be stood outside the conference entrance with the FVI leaflets and vapour tanks. No ACIGs, just no vapour tanks. Um, we might have a couple of ACIGs there just to say, this is an ACIG, 
these are vapor tanks and these are vapor and you know what i mean um and if anybody's around there and would care to join us to be civilly disobedient great the more the merrier somebody in chat was asking what time early early i don't like the sound of early uh we'll have to be out of bed at seven o'clock what i'm barely in bed by that time <laughs> well didn't bother going to bed then okay then we'll just okay. we'll just so. we'll now nah, we'll just sit up and do what you what 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 you can do really well in glasgow okay hi so Lots whip it up saying so they won't let you in then dave no apparently not we're not welcome not welcome tried not welcome but that undesirables. Do, I, undesirables, unwashed and unwanted. Mind you, with a state of mind, never mind. Um, yes, I mean, Granny Louisa, Louise Ross tried to get something sorted and they basically just blew her off and ignored her. I'll have one last go to see if I can get some tickets. Um, but I, I, I'm not holding my breath, I'm really not. I can't believe that they ignored Louise Ross. I mean, that is just ridiculous. It's um, ignorant. Yeah. In the term that we use, ignorant around here. It's rude, rude, very, very rude. Um, so I, I have every intention of doorstepping Sheila Duffy and saying, what the hell are you playing at, woman? Are you thick as two short planks or do you just not understand? Either way, this is an A-Sig, this is a vapor tank, and frankly, either one is better for you. <laughs> and you are a fool for opposing them. That's what I'll do. I'll find a better form of words, but I won't rehearse it too much. That would be that would be bad, wouldn't it? But I've got a really bad memory, so there's no point me rehearsing nothing. That's true. But we've stuck to the script tonight, kid. I have. My script has been brilliant. I've followed it to the letter. Ex well, <laughs> <laughs> look, it's red lines on mine. Right. Um, as per usual, we've overrun. I know. Wow. It's getting to be a habit, and I do apologise for it. But as per usual. I like to put it across to Sav to take the last word from chat because I've said it before and I'll say it again and nobody ever disagrees because it's true, we've got the best chat on the planet. Sav, what they got? We have. <laughs> uh, there's a few suggestions on what you, you should go as fancy dress, um, possibly dressing up as a witch, but we may get passed off as Linda McCavan, so mm. that I'll tell, tell you what I was going to do. I was mm. going to I was going to tie a ribbon round my genitals and go as the original fancy dressed ball, but I thought better of it. <laughs> well, there's a few people there saying, "How are you going to dress up as Bridget for the day?" I might take her with us. <laughs> but chat have been absolutely brilliant tonight. Cause it's been a very heavy, sort of intense show tonight, and they have been phenomenal as always. Brilliant. I'll end, I think, on what very boring has just said, and he said, down with Ash, Scotland. I second that emotion. Um, and thank you, chat. I know tonight's show, well, it hasn't been easy to do from, from this point of view because the 16 pages of documentation there. Um, we've, we're going to stick the link into where it's at. It's all in JPEG because I had to scan it. Because I, I, literally, this is not an electronic communication that's been smuggled out of Geneva. Um, and yeah, you'll get some idea of what they're talking about. I mean, we didn't cover the fact that they won't even let Interpol in because Interpol got a donation of, I think, around about 100,000 euros from Philip Morris International to aid them in stopping the smuggling of How illicit tobacco. How pathetic is that? We didn't cover that. We didn't cover the fact that they are going to check whether journalists have ever written in glowing terms about cigarettes and they'll bar them from being in. We didn't cover the fact that basically these buggers want taken outside and shot. And on that bombshell, I'll wish you all a good night and say thanks, Sav, because your job cannot have been easy tonight. It's been a pleasure tonight, though. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, that's brilliant to know. And thanks to the team for all the backup that they provide. But most Absolutely. of all, thanks to you, chat, for joining us for the last hour and five minutes uh, without you there would be no point in us doing it so until we see you next time which is likely to be sunday for dave's tackle box not forgetting that ry4 have they done a trailer for ry4 radio uh, i'm not playing that one <laughs>
there is a certain trailer going about for our white I'm radio, not yes. playing that one. And I'll tell you why I'm not playing that one. He's got a much nicer ass than I have. <laughs> and anyway, every time my ass gets shown on air, I get the Mickey taken out. He shows his ass and he gets a round of applause. Or maybe that was just his buttocks clapping together as he ran. <laughs> Until we see you next time, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. We'll see you. Take care. Bye-bye.